and thank you everyone for joining us today. I am Amit Saxena, along with my colleagues, Dr. Deepika Chabra and Mr. Arvind Singh from Medical Services are pleased to welcome you all to this AOGD webinar, Delhi PG Forum. Presentations by postgraduate of Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi, with Jackson Paul Pharma as academic partner, makers of Lycoret syrup, Lycoret soft gel, maintained 250-500 hydroxyprogesterone and gepitone serum for anemia. We would like to express our gratitude and warm and hearty welcome to the esteemed experts and all the attendees joining today. We request you to post your questions, suggestions, clarifications via text in q and box in a chat box. Please note this webinar is streaming live on Facebook and the link has already been shared in the chat box. To refer this webinar's recording in the future, please visit our YouTube channel, Jackson Paul Medical Insights. Now, I request Dr. Sunita Madak, Madam, to kindly take the proceeding further. Um, myself, along with my co uh, convener, Dr. Shivani, I welcome you all, friends and the residents attended. Uh, this topic is really important. As everybody knows, that anemia is an underlying cause in 30% of cases of maternal morbidity and morbid mortality. Uh, this topic is being presented by Lady Harding Medical College students, Vinita and Ashima Gupta. And uh, the chair to chair the session, we have Dr. Reena Yadav. She's a director professor and HOD of Lady Harding Medical College. Uh, she has uh, is a very keen interest in uh, minimal invasive surgery and has got diploma also. And her areas of interest are high risk obstetrics and gynae oncology and MIS, of course. She's a resource person for NB UPSC. And so, Dr. Sunita, let's start this. Thank you, uh, Dr. Reena. And the moderators for today's session are Dr. Minakshi. May I have Dr. Minakshi Singh is professor in Department of Ops and Gynae in Lady Harding Medical College. And uh, she and Dr. Poonam Kashyap, who is Associate Professor in uh, Mulana Zad Medical College. They are both of them are very keen teachers and excellent uh, in their work. And of course, both of our AOGD members, they are going to moderate today's session. Uh, okay, over to you, Dr. Reena. Uh, a very good evening to everybody. And uh, as you know, that hematological abnormalities we often see during pregnancy and anemia is uh, the most important cause. Uh, as far as uh, maternal mortality, as Dr. Sunita has already told that it, uh, uh, it is an indirect cause of uh, maternal mortality and it is a pre uh, preventable cause that we can easily prevent it. And um, of course, it increases maternal morbidity also. And as far as the India is concerned, National Health uh, Family Survey, according to that, around 50% of the pregnant ladies are anemic. As far as other studies are concerned, it varies from 40 to 70% uh, women. And of course, the iron deficiency anemia is the most common uh, nutritional anemia. And other nutrition deficiencies are also common. And I am happy that uh, anemia is being discussed today. And uh, I hope that 
all the but all history we should be asking in a case of anemia how to evaluate what all examination to be done and uh, treatment uh, what are the indications for blood transfusion iron uh, injectable iron i hope all these things will be discussed and everything will be uh, your doubts will be cleared and uh, i am happy that minakshi uh, who is also interested in high risk obstetrics uh, is uh, going to be discussing this very important topic as well as dr poonam kashyap uh, i think you can take the uh, stage me minakshi thank you thank you ma'am so can we start up with a discussion part vinita and ashima yes yes ma'am so we may start up with your background information regarding the case and then we can discuss with a long history long case okay uh, good evening everyone uh, uh, the background information regarding anemia it is one of the commonest medical disorders in pregnancy the prevalence in india is about 52.2% as per nshs guidelines nutritional anemia which is the iron deficiency anemia is the commonest and it is one of the leading cause of maternal and perinatal mortality and morbidity uh, anemia is defined in a non pregnant woman as a hemoglobin of less than 12 g percent according to who in a pregnant woman less than hemoglobin less than 11 or hematocrit less than 33% in a pregnant woman according to cdc uh, there are trimesters first and third trimesters uh, is less than 11 g percent and second trimester is less than 10.5 g percent icmr classification for the severity of anemia is divided into mild moderate severe and very severe mild is 10 to 11 moderate is 7 to 9.9 severe is less than 7 and very severe is less than 4 the various causes of anemia in pregnancy includes acquired and hereditary acquired causes includes iron deficiency one of the most common causes followed by anemia due to acute blood loss anemia of inflammation or malignancy megaloblastic anemia acquired hemolytic anemias or aplastic anemia the hereditary causes includes thalassemia sickle cell hemoglobinopathies other hemoglobinopathies and hereditary hemolytic anemias so uh, broadly they are classified into those co uh, caused by chronic blood loss as in git causes as in esophagitis peptic ulcer malignancy inflammatory bowel disease hookworm infestations in genito urinary causes as caused by heavy menstrual bleeding or postpartum hemorrhage and intravascular hemolysis systemic causes like hht hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia and chronic schistosomiasis decrease intake of iron which is the most common cause and uh, due to uh, improperly taken vegan diet or poor diet in iron or eating disorders there are also causes of decreased iron absorption like celiac disease atrophic gastritis any gastric or intestinal bypass surgery inflammatory bowel disease h pylori colonization or use of drugs like ppi proton pump inhibitors increased demands as in pregnancy infancy and adolescence uh, in heavy menstrual blood losses uh, in cases of endurance sports so what is the extra requirement uh, total 800 to 1000 mg extra iron is required in pregnancy where 300 mg goes for the fetus and 50 mg is for the placenta 400 to 500 mg is for increased red cell mass and 250 mg iron is lost during delivery and 220 mg are the metabolic uh, basal losses so but we also conserve iron which is due to cessation of menses and contraction of blood volume about 400 mg of iron is uh, not lost this there is a physiological dilutional anemia due to rise in the blood uh, plasma volume which is much more than the rise in rbc volume so the rise in plasma volume is about 40 to 50% and rise in rbc volume is about 20 to 30% so this leads to physiological dilutional anemia the uh, factors required for erythropoiesis includes proteins for the synthesis of globin minerals like iron for synthesis of heme hormones erythropoietin thyroxine and androgens trace elements zinc cobalt and copper and vitamins b12 folic acid vitamin c b6 and vitamin a 
सो नॉर्मल डाइट कंटेन्स टेन टू मिली ट्वेंटी मिलीग्राम ऑफ आयरन आउट ऑफ विच ओनली फाइव टू टेन परसेंट इज एब्सॉर्ब लीडिंग टू ओनली वन टू 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 मिलीग्राम ऑफ आयरन सो एडिशनल डेली आयरन रिक्वायरमेंट इन अर्ली प्रेगनेंसी टू टू थ्री मिलीग्राम पर डे एंड इन लेट प्रेगनेंसी सिक्स टू सेवन मिलीग्राम पर डे हेंस वी शुड डेली सप्लीमेंट फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी मिलीग्राम ऑफ एलिमेंटल आयरन ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी the folic acid requirement is also increased which is 400 to 600 microgram per day and uh, we know strict vegetarians b12 is deficient uh, depending on the severity of anemia we'll have clinical presentation such as weakness fatigue breathlessness palpitations swelling over feet and body the signs of anemia include pallor facial puffiness raised jvp tachycardia and tachypnea crepes in lung basins hepatosplenomegaly pitting edema over abdominal wall and the legs we can also find hemic murmur and signs like glossitis stomatitis chiliosis and brittle hair so what are the effects of anemia in pregnancy in antepartum it can lead to increased risk of preterm delivery premature rupture of membranes preeclampsia it can predispose to infections it can also lead to antepartum hemorrhage and congestive heart failure Uh, the intrapartum complications include prolonged labor fetal distress and increased rates of operative delivery the postpartum complications includes more chances of pph more chances of puerperal sepsis lactational failure pulmonary thromboembolism sub involution of uterus and postpartum depression in the neonate it leads to low birth weight and iugr baby it can also lead to prematurity it can lead to neonatal anemia and abnormal cognitive development so what are the most critical periods the most critical period include 28 to 30 weeks in labor immediately after delivery and early puerperium because at this time the cardiac output is high so uh, there is a failure to cope with the pregnancy induced raise in cardiac output leading to congestive heart failure thus we should elicit a detailed history of the age of the patient parity diet of the patient any history of chronic bleeding any history of worm infestation history of diseases like malaria and kalazar and history of multiple blood transfusions in the past in the examination we'll look for pallor glossitis any hepatosplenomegaly which is suggestive of hemolytic anemia any jaundice present also suggestive of hemolytic anemia any purpura and ecchymosis suggestive of bleeding disorders any evidence of chronic renal disease or any tubercular lymphadenopathy and we should also look for signs of anasarca and congestive heart failure investigation that we would like to order is a cbc with peripheral smear rbc in dices lft kft iron studies high performance liquid chromatography b12 and folic acid levels reticulocyte count lactate dehydrogenase levels rdw red cell distribution width and rbc folate assay so what is a normal smear is a normocytic and a normochromic cell in iron deficiency we have a microcytic and a hypochromic cell with anisocytosis that is variation in size and poikilocytosis that is variation in shape in megaloblastic anemia we have hypersegmented neutrophils and macrovellocytes in sickle cell anemia we can see sickle shaped cells and in thalassemia we can see target cells Uh, so uh, megaloblastic anemia we can find the hypersegmented neutrophils macrovellocytes and teardrop shaped cells in thalassemia we can found again target cells hyper hypochromatic cells and nucleated rbcs with basophilic shifting in hemolytic anemia we can frequently find schistocytes in a uh, and microspherocytes with lack of the central pallor and sickle cells in sickle cell anemia the normal indices includes uh, the in uh, how to differentiate between uh, uh, iron deficiency and the thalassemia both of them are microcytic hypochromic anemia therefore mcv and mch will be decreased in mchc will be uh, decrease in iron deficiency whereas in thalassemia it could be normal or decrease when we do the high performance liquid chromatography then the hpf levels are normal in iron deficiency and they are raised in thalassemia also the hpa2 levels are normal in iron deficiency whereas they are raised usually more than 2 to 3 in thalassemia the serum iron values in iron deficiency are decreased and also serum ferritin level whereas they are normal 
or raised in thalassemia the total iron binding capacity is one of the main differentiating features which is raised in iron deficiency anemia and it is normal in thalassemia other investigations that we order in patient of anemia is a urine routine microscopy and culture sensitivity for any signs of asymptomatic bacteria stool examination for any occult blood or any helminthic infections like hookworm then blood urea and uh, blood urea nitrogen and creat for any ren uh, renal disorder liver function test and total protein and serum albumin if no possible cause are found with the uh, 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 the common investigation then we go for bone marrow examination in cases of refractory anemia and x ray chest in patients who are symptomatic of tubercular disease or any signs of congestive heart failure so what are the management algorithms in a normal iron deficiency anemia we look for the mcv first whether it is microcytic normocytic or macrocytic the causes of M microcytic anemia includes iron deficiency anemia thalassemia anemia of chronic disease sideroblastic anemia lead poisoning and copper poisoning and the cause of normocytic anemia includes those caused by the acute blood loss hemolysis early phase of iron deficiency anemia anemia of chronic disease kidney disease hereditary spherocytosis and presence of concomitant micro and macrocytic anemia the common causes of macrocytic anemia is folic acid and b12 deficiency drug induced hemolytic anemia alcohol abuse and liver and thyroid disorders so we should check for the classic iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia uh, the main differentiating features already told the iron deficiency there is high tibc whereas in thal there is normal tibc uh, the transferrin saturation is low in iron deficiency anemia whereas transferrin saturation is uh, normal to raise in thalassemia the ferritin is low in iron deficiency anemia whereas this is normal to raise in thalassemia the red cell distribution width is raised in iron deficiency anemia whereas this is normal in thalassemia then if we are suspecting the normocytic anemia we can check for the reticulocyte count there are low if the uh, if uh, the iron levels are low they are normal then we should check the erythropoietin level and hemoglobin electrophoresis and they are high if there are any evidences of hemolysis like raised bilirubin raised ldh and low haptoglobulin for macrocytic anemia we should go for the red cell distribution with the b12 and folate levels thyroid and liver function tests and peripheral smear profile axis of anemia uh, according to the national guidelines we start a daily iron and folic acid tablet starting from the fourth month of the pregnancy and it is continued throughout pregnancy for a minimum of 180 days which contains 60 mg of elemental iron and 500 mg of folic acid deworming is done uh, uh, one uh, uh, tablet of 400 mg of albendazole is given after the first trimester or mebendazole tablet can be given 100 mg bd for continuous 3 days so uh, how can we imp uh, improve or prevent the uh, uh, anemia by improving the diet uh, the diet rich in iron absorption then uh, we have to ask the patient to avoid tea and coffee within 1 hour of intake of the iron tablets uh, now the route of administration depends on the severity of anemia the gestational age whether the patient is compliant to iron and whether the iron is tolerable iron supplementation is not recommended in the first trimester due to increased risk of the nausea and vomiting so oral iron if the pregnancy uh, the hemoglobin is 7 to 11 g and the pregnancy is remote from term then we supplement the patient with oral iron what are the contraindications to oral iron if the patient is not able to tolerate it if the patient presents with severe anemia in advanced pregnancy and if the patient is non compliant with the oral iron the cause the frequent cause of failure to respond is inaccurate diagnosis faulty absorption continuous blood loss any coexistent infections and concomitant folate deficiency so what are the indicators of response to oral iron feeling of well being improved look of the patient better appetite rise in hemoglobin which is 0.5 to 0.7 g per deciliter per week and the response is usually seen after 3 weeks and reticulocyte count which is increase in 7 to 10 days
the common iron preparations include ferrous sulfate which is the best form and it has the best efficacy but the uh, disadvantage is that it has more uh, gi side effects ferrous fumarate has similar efficacy and side effect to ferrous sulfate ferrous ascorbate uh, is uh, has better absorption of iron and it has less gi side effects uh, as well as the carbonyl iron which also has the less gi side effects the what are the indications of parenteral iron transfusion so uh, one of the common indications is the presence of moderate anemia uh, 7 to 10 gram percent with during pregnancy and if the patient does not tolerate oral iron if the patient is not compliant to oral iron and there is no improvement in the hemoglobin levels uh, after one month of iron folic acid tablet intake or if the patient presents with severe anemia at advanced gestation that is 6 .9, uh, uh, in early gestation that is 6.9 to 5 gram during 13 to 34 weeks of pregnancy contraindications includes patients with evidences of iron overload as in thalassemia patients patients with known hypersensitivity to these preparations patients with anemia not caused by iron deficiency patients with liver disorders like jaundice cirrhosis or liver renal failure any signs of acute cardiac failure and a known case of thalassemia, sickle cell anemia or hemolytic anemia. How do we give these uh, parental iron transfusion? This is by Ganzoni's formula, which is body weight, which is the pre-pregnancy body weight into target hemoglobin, which is taken as 11 gram minus the actual hemoglobin into 2.4 plus 500 milligram for the replenishment of the stores. Uh, so this parental iron, the most common that we give is iron sucrose. Iron sucrose. Ashima, we, yes, ma'am. Ashima, can you just wind up the slides quickly so that we can switch over to the long case? Just name the preparations. Yes, yes. The various parental iron preparations include FCM, uh, iron carboxymaltose, iron sucrose, iron dextran, and iron sorbitol citrate complex. What are the indications of blood transfusion? In a pregnancy that is less than 36 weeks, if the patient presents uh, less than 4 gram percent at, without or with any signs of cardiac failure, or if the patient presents with 5 to 7 gram with signs of heart failure. Pregnancy that is advanced more than 36 weeks, hemoglobin less than 7 without any signs of cardiac failure, or severe anemia with decompensation or any acute hemorrhage with decompensation and hemoglobinopathies or bone marrow failure syndromes. Megaloblastic anemia treatment, the folate as uh, folic acid given 5 mg per day continued till 4 weeks of delivery and B12 injection, B12 is given 1000 microgram daily for 7 days, followed by weekly for 4 weeks, followed by monthly for life. Management of labor has to be supervised with proper counseling and consent. The packed cells has to be kept cross-matched. Women should be kept in propped position with intermittent oxygen. Strict aseptic precautions with minimal pervaginal examinations and patent IV lines should be secured. But IV flu should be avoided. Uh, the second and uh, second stage should be cut short by forceps or ventus in case of severe anemia and active management. The third stage of labor is to be done. Injection methargin IV is contraindicated. Frequent chest auscultation should be done in the second stage of the labor to detect pulmonary edema and injection furosemide can be given if any signs of decompensation after checking blood pressure. Postnatal care, early ambulation is encouraged. Lactating mothers are also prescribed daily iron and folic acid supplementation to be continued 180 days postpartum. Watch for any uh, signs of purpural sepsis, congestive heart failure, thromboembolism, and lactation failure. At least a gap of two years should be maintained. And the contraceptive choice you can give is progesterone only pills, dumpa injections, and chaya tablet. Uh, this is one of uh, the Anemia Mukta Bharat scheme in which we have uh, six interventions and six uh, age groups which are targeted. The interventions include prophylactic IFA tablets, deworming, intensified year-round behavior change communication campaign, testing of anemia using digital methods, mandatory provision of I, uh, IFA fortified foods in public health program, and addressing the non nutrition causes in endemic pockets like malaria, hemoglobinopathies and fluorosis. Thank you.
Mrs. X, wife of Mr. Y, a 21 year old resident of Sadar Bazar, New Delhi, Hindu by religion, illiterate, homemaker by occupation, is a primary gravida with nine month amenorrhea, presented for the first time in gynae casualty with complaint of weakness and easy fatigability since 15 days, breathlessness and exertion since two days. Uh, history of presenting Ill pregnancy illness. Patient was asymptomatic two days back. Then she developed weakness and easy fatigability, which has gradually increased over the last five days. She also complained of breathlessness on exertion since two days, not associated with palpitation or chest pain. There is no history of swelling over feet or abdominal distension. There is no history of cough, fever with chills or rigor. No history of pica. No history of passage of stool, uh, passage of worms in stool. No history of bleeding per rectum. No history of uh, syncope, chest pain, or orthopnea. No history of EG bruisability, petechi, or yellow discoloration of urine. No history of epistaxis. No history of hematuria or burning micturition. No history of altered bowel habit. Her menstrual history is uh, last me normal menstrual period is 21 uh, October 2021 and expected date of delivery is 27 7 2022. Period of gestation is 36 weeks. Her previous cycles were regular 28 to 30 day cycle. She used two to three pads per day and uh, blood flow was normal and no dysmenorrhea and no history of passage of clot during menses. Her obstetric history are married, she is married for 10 months and she is primary gravida and she has conceived spontaneously. Her tri trimester, trimester history are first trimester. In first, uh, her conception was spontaneous. She was diagnosed uh, for pregnancy by UPT at two months of amenorrhea and there was no visit to any health care center in the first trimester, no history of radiation or added any teratogen exposure, fever with rash, burning maturation, discharge or bleeding per vaginum, no history of excessive vomiting. In second, in second trimester, she visited a local dispensary at four months of pregnancy and received uh, one dose of tetanus toxoid there and she was advised routine antenatal investigation and labeled to ultrasound but she didn't follow with these reports. She was advised iron folic acid tablet from dispensary but she took the tablets irregularly. There's no history of polyphagia, polyuria and polydipsia, no history of headache, blurring of vision or epigastric pain, no history of leaking per vaginum, bleeding per vaginum or pain in abdomen. Past history, uh, there is no history of jaundice, blood transfusion in the past, and there is no history of tuberculosis, fever, and recurrent urinary tract infection. There is no history of hypertension, diabetes mellitus, epilepsy, bronchial asthma, hypothyroidism, inflammatory bowel disease, or connective tissue disorder. There is no history of any drug intake. Personal uh, history, she is housewife, a vegetarian by diet, uh, her bowel and bladder habits are normal. No addiction to any special substance belongs to lower socio-economic class according to modified Kutuswami classification. Anita, just, Anita, just hold on. Go to the previous slide. Why you, uh, what exactly do you want to ask her by saying bowel and bladder habits? What did you ask her? Ma'am, uh, there, if there is history of chronic diarrhea or there is a passage of blood from stool or bleeding per rectum, Okay. So basically, you want to know any blood loss per rectum, and you want to know about any about malabsorption syndrome. Yeah, yes. malabsorption syndrome. No? Yes. You are asking about chronic diarrhea. Okay. And go back to your previous slide, the previous one. What kind of history will you take? What which drug you are uh, you ask the patient? Ma'am, uh, I will ask about uh, intake of phenytoine or uh, primaquine or pyrimethamine. And yes. aspirin, quinidine, rifampicin, antivalerate yes, drugs. Yes. Go on, go ahead, please. Her dietary history are her normal diet consists of. Uh, Rice, dal, roti, sabji, milk product, and takes banana occasionally. Rice per plate, uh, 272 calorie. Uh, so dal you per can just tell about the calories and protein. A total calorie intake is 1605 calorie per day, which is, uh, she is deficit by 26.2%, uh, and her protein intake is 20 gram per day, which is 69% deficit. Her family history, there is no history of repeated blood transfusion, no history of hypertension, diabetes, bleeding disorder, or any chronic illness in the 
family what chronic illness in the family you are talking about ma'am history of thalassemia or any history of blood uh, transfusion or any hereditary disorder hemoglobinopathy anything else ma'am history of uh, inflammatory on examination a patient is conscious the patient was conscious and oriented to time place and person and she was sitting comfortably on bed and she was thin built and her hydration was adequate her height was 155 cm weight was 48 kg and her bmi was 20 kg per meter square her vital sphere uh, pulse rate 90 beats per minute regular good volume no radio radial or radio femoral delay her bp was 110 by 70 mm hg in right arm in sitting position her respiratory rate was 18 Per minute and she was a febrile. Her temperature was ninety-seven point two degree Fahrenheit. Her jugular venous pressure was not raised. On general physical examination, uh, her hair texture were normal. Nails so plat platonicia. Uh, no angular stomatitis, closeitis, or chilosis. A uh, pallor present. Uh, patient appeared six uh, to seven gram per cent clinically. There was no. Which all? Hold on. In which all cases you will see platonicia. Ma'am, in case of nutritional, ma'am, nutritional nutrition deficiency anemia. Particularly, deficiency. yeah, particularly iron deficiency. You will see the nail bed nail changes. Yes, ma'am. And what is glossitis, Vinita? When you are mentioning glossitis, what exactly are you looking at? What is glossitis? Ma'am, inflammation of tongue. It is, uh, ma'am, mainly seen in uh, B twelve deficiency anemia. How do you diagnose? I mean, what do you see clinically? What do you see that you say it is glossitis? Ma'am, there is a joke. There is red beefy tongue. So the tongue is smoothened. Otherwise, what do you see? Normal tongue. Even. What is? Yeah, the tongue is smoothened. It's uh, more than the normal size, inflamed, smoothened. Yes. Okay. And what is kilosis? There is no history of uh, ictus, no cyanosis, no clubbing, no pedal edema, no palpable uh, lymph node, and there is there was no thyromegaly. On systemic examination, uh, on examining chest, uh, air bilateral equal in air entry was there, and no there was no added sound. On CBS examination, S one S two heard an early systolic murmur uh, was present. On uh, breast examination, bilateral breast appeared normal. On per abdomen examination, uh, ins on inspection, abdomen was uniformly distended. All quadrant moved well with respiration. Umbilicus was central and inverted. There was no scars or no dilated veins, and uh, all hernial sites were free. On um, further examination, on first pelvic grip, uh, there was hard globular bellotable. Part suggestive of head, and on second pelvic grip, head was not engaged. I think you have skipped one slide. Fundal height, you have no idea. Yes, ma'am. On palpation, the fundal height was thirty-six week, and symphysio fundal height was thirty-six centimeter. Abdominal girth was thirty-eight inches, and on fundal grip, uh, there was broad, broad, soft, irregular part suggestive of breach on lateral grips. On right side, smooth curved part, part suggestive of back, and on left side, irregularly knobby part suggestive of limb. Uh, on first pelvic grip, there was hard globular bellotable part suggestive of head, and on second pelvic grip, head was not engaged. Liker appeared uh, adequate clinically, and uterus was relaxed. There was no uterine tenderness. There was no obvious hepatosplenomegaly. On auscultation, a fetal heart rate was one forty. Beats per minute, regular in right. It was in right spinal umbilical line. Uh, my provisional diagnosis is twenty-one year female, primary gravida with thirty-six weeks period of gestation with single life fetus in cephalic presentation with severe anemia, not in heart failure. Which? What do you say that she has severe anemia? What are the points favoring? Ma'am, uh, first of all. we go to symptom the symptom was of easy fatigability and uh, there was a history of exertion on there was history of exertion okay. breathlessness on exertion 
there was history of breathlessness on exertion even a full term uh, pregnancy can have the patient can complain of breathlessness in the third trimester she is at 36 weeks yes ma'am so how will you differentiate that what you ask ma'am please repeat uh, even a full term pregnancy the patient can have uh, complained of you no know, breathlessness yes ma'am then we will examine her on examination and there was a pallor pallor was present and she appeared 6 to 7 gram, gram clinically and on examining or on asking history uh on she was uh, also uh, there was uh, ma'am uh, uh, on examination also in case of uh, uh, anemia in the pedal uh, uh, i will also uh, go for uh, in case of uh, term pregnancy uh, if there is uh, normally there is also uh, breathlessness uh, if there is polyhydramnios i like that but uh, in our case uh, there was a typical history of breathlessness on exertion was on uh, walking on stairs for two two stairs uh, she was feeling breathless and uh, her symptom has increased over time Okay. and there was also history of easy fatigability easy fatigability so you think that's a case of severe anemia how can you confirm this ma'am for confirmation i have to go, uh, go for certain investigations uh, like cbc with peripheral smear and uh, liver function test renal function test and will also after that if there is any abnormality found then we will advise further investigations like if hb hemoglobin comes less then we will advise any main investigation like iron studies which include serum iron ferritin no, i'm not ferritin. talking no i'm not talking about the iron studies now do you in the first place you get iron studies done in the first place no ma'am no ma'am will so when the patient has come to you what investigation yes. you will get it done ma'am complete blood, complete blood count i will do with uh, indices rbc indices or uh, i will also the complete blood count with the rn indices and anything else peripheral smear yes so anemia workup cannot be complete without a peripheral smear yes right yes. so what will you see in peripheral smear ma'am we will see for morphology of rbc and uh, morphology for rbc or we will also look for any uh, we will also look for uh, platelets uh, if they are reduced and uh, we will also look for sign of hemolysis like a cystocyte may be present mm -hmm. and uh, there are different peripheral picture in different type of anemia we can differentiate on based on something based on a specific peripheral smear findings what else can you find except those yes. rbcs there should malaria be... parasite i can find ma'am um, parasite yes. yes what else mm -hmm. there can be different types of anemia So in the yes. peripheral blood picture, size, size, your microcytic picture, microcytic, microchrom, hypochromic, microcytic, hypochromic, or we can say normocytic, normochromic, or macrocytic, hypochromic cells, or we can find cystocyte, tear drop cell, tinsel cells. In case any other cell apart from the RBCs, ma'am, if segmented, hypersegmented neutrophil, we can find, and. Uh, reticulocytes reticulocytes we can what does that signify when you find hypersegmented neutrophils it is uh, seen mainly in vitamin b12 deficiency anemia and it's uh, it shows uh, premature cells are being secreted in the blood and it shows ineffective erythropoiesis and one important also finding in macrocytic anemia macrocytic anemia Mac and macrovellocytes yes macro value size so also characteristic picture of this yellow blood stain yes okay anything else on the peripheral smear we usually find cases of sepsis a toxic granules ma'am yes that is also important because infection is also one of the causes of anemia okay uh, just i skipped one question while you were presenting the history uh, can you let me know why was the menstrual history important in this patient Ma'am, there is also sometimes menorrhagia. I mean, heavy menstrual bleeding is there, 
that may might cause the anemia that might be yeah. the cause of it it is important in this patient because she is just yes, primary gravida married for hardly 10 months no history of bleeding from any size so this is important for this patient maybe it's background anemia nutritional yes, and addition because of the menstrual abnormalities so carry on with other investigations this is the first time investigation with the peripheral blood picture you got to know what is the exact picture say the picture comes out to be macrocytic hyperchromia so now how do you proceed on ma'am in case of macrocytic macrocytic picture uh, i will go for serum b12 and folic acid are we talking about no, micro or macro micro micro microcytic micro okay okay ma'am in in case of microcytic i will go for uh, iron studies which include serum iron uh, b12 fol uh, serum iron uh, serum ferritin uh, transferrin saturation total iron binding capacity it will so iron study include all these parameter wait wait wait. wait do you directly go on to iron studies or there are other methods also that by which you can rule out something else what is your aim of hplc ma'am ma'am uh, in the cbc we can have the menser index which is commonly uh, used to differentiate between the most common cause that is the iron deficiency anemia and the thalassemia it is calculated by mcv upon the uh, the packed cell volume so in that is less than 13 suggestive of thalassemia uh, and uh, more than 13 is uh, likely to be iron deficiency anemia in the indices only can you make out anything which suggests iron deficiency and thalassemia you can differentiate uh, ma'am mchc is one of the most uh, mchc is one of the parameters which is decreased in the iron deficiency anemia but it is normal in thalassemia yes. so ma'am this is one differentiating point yes ma'am and mcb and mch will be decreased mm -hmm. in case of in both in both uh, microcytic hypochromia but it is more decreased in case of thalassemia and we will yeah, mchc would be normal in cases of thalassemia mchc will be normal ma'am yeah. mcb and mch yeah in uh, in iron deficiency all will be decreased mch mch and mchc yes but it would be normal in thalassemia yes so your differential diagnosis is thalassemia that is what you want to rule out right yes okay is manzer index a reliable uh, this thing You can rely on that. Mm -hmm. How much is the sensitivity in specimen? Ma'am, mm -hmm. suppose a patient is having iron deficiency anemia with thalassemia. Yes, ma'am. Then what will happen? Ma'am, then it will be more than more than thirty. It will be. So in such a confusion state, what should you do? Ma'am, uh, for uh, the uh, confirmation, we can go for the uh, HPLC, uh, high performance liquid chromatography, and before that, we can also do the Nestrop test, which is the NAEG dye single test tube osmotic fragility test, which differentiates between the iron deficiency anemia and the thalassemia. Uh, in the Nestrop test, we uh, take the hypotonic solution, so the th thalassemia patients there are uh, hbf is raised the fetal hemoglobin so that is resistant to hemolysis in the uh, hypotonic solution therefore uh, if we take two test tubes one of the test tubes uh, uh, containing the uh, normal saline and uh, uh, the blood uh, which is uh, uh, suggestive of ida and uh, the another which is suggestive of thalassemia so in thalassemia uh, the we will not be able to see the line that is behind the test tube So that test of test will be positive in thalassemia. Okay. Any other test? Ma'am, red cell distribution width width. What is that? Ma'am, it will um, uh, size of uh, uh, size range of size of RBC PC, small to large. That range is red cell distribution. It is. Uh, so what happens? It is raised in iron deficiency. It is raised in iron deficiency anemia and. If it is low therapy, in thalassemia it is decreased yeah. in thalassemia yeah it can be a one of the important marker for seeing the response to iron therapy iron deficiency anemia if you are prescribing iron therapy then this rdw gets normal okay yes with iron therapy and you can see the percentage now the recent test which have come is the percentage of hypochromia in reticulocyte itself you can differentiate not uh, taking exactly the retic count that is also Because now your main aim is to differentiate between thalassemia and iron deficiency anemia. Yes. Right? Now, what are the findings like in this patient? Have you got the 
Are there studies done in this patient? Yes, ma'am. Her serum ferritin was 10 nanogram per deciliter and her serum iron concentration was 42 microgram per deciliter. Her total iron binding capacity was 588 microgram per deciliter and transferrin saturation was 7%. Suppose uh, you have a patient who has come early, you know, yes, in, with a mild anemia. What would yes. the blood picture in such a case? What is the first thing to get arranged? MCV. Ma'am, MCV is the most sensitive. Uh, Ma'am, if, uh, if you have got iron studies. Ma'am, first of all, serum, serum iron will decrease. Serum ferritin, ma'am. सबसे पहले क्या होता है? The stores get utilized. Okay, so so very important finding to see is the serum ferritin. Okay, the stores get exhausted. So our aim is to catch hold of the patient at this time, you know, when the iron stores are getting depleted, and after that the uh, other uh, derangement would occur. Okay, so after hemogram, show me hemogram also complete hemogram. So now, what is your diagnosis? Mm, iron deficiency anemia. So now we are dealing with a case of iron deficiency anemia. Okay. So how will you manage this case? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to ask that you have mentioned every time that we'll go for complete blood count, not just hemoglobin. So is there any relevance of other parameters? We don't just talk about hemoglobin when we are talking about anemia. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, it will help in differentiating from other type of anemia also sometimes. There may be pancytopenia also, ma'am. Platelet okay. might be decreased and sometimes so, TLC so what might... Are the, so what are the components we are talking about when we talk about complete blood count? It is not just hemoglobin? Yes, ma'am. Ma TLC is seen uh, if it is, it is raised in infections like uh, uh, any uh, any infection uh, uh, in the body like uti or asymptomatic bacteria can also predispose to anemia uh, so uh, and uh, also ma'am chronic infections like tuberculosis uh, then ma'am platelet count is also seen because they can be coexistent uh, bleeding disorders uh, can be present so there will be low platelet count and uh, uh, the mcv mch and mchc are used to see uh, to differentiate the types of anemia whether this is microcytic macrocytic or normocytic uh, then, okay, okay, that you have already described. I just wanted R to... we will also see RBC count, ma'am. RBC count, and I just wanted to insist upon Hematoc that apart from seeing the hemoglobin, you should look for the total leukocyte count, differential leukocyte count. It is equally important. Okay, yes. where's the shift? The left shift, right shift. It has a acute inflammation infection or it's a chronic infection. Then the platelet count. Low platelet count as well as high platelet count. So you have to rule out any picture of uh, pancytopenia. Pancytopenia can be seen in? Ma'am, in case of uh, B12 deficiency also. We can yes, see. it's not that it will be seen in bone marrow aplasias only. You can see this pattern in B12 deficiency also. So the whole picture is important, the platelet count. If it is thrombocytosis, what does it signify? Ma'am, it can be... Ma'am, thrombocytosis uh, can be uh, present in uh, infections also. Yes. It can be. It is one of the markers of sepsis, sepsis. so it's important. Yeah, we see so many patients in clinical uh, setups now that uh, the patient has come with sepsis and with anemia also. So the whole picture fits in. Everything is raised except hemoglobin. Okay, so the overall, uh, the whole report has to be read thoroughly, not just hemoglobin. In fact, uh, in DLC also you have to look for whether it is neutrophilia, monocytosis, lymphocytosis, all the differential count has to be looked for. This DLC is high in everything, right? just to rule out infections. Yes, sir. What is your diagnosis in this case? Ma'am, uh, my diagnosis is 21-year female, uh, primary gravida with 36-week period of gestation with single life Fetus kephalic presentation with severe anemia, uh, iron deficiency anemia, not in pain. Now you are sure that it is iron deficiency anemia. So how will you manage this case? Ma'am, my patient is 30, 36, uh, 36 week POG and her hemoglobin is 6.5 That's uh, and she is symptomatic also. 
that's why we will uh, go for uh, blood transfusion pap cell transfusion at least one unit pcb is to be transfused and our target hemoglobin will be 8 8 g per cent only one has to be transfused ma'am we we can trans transfuse two also ma'am first we will transfuse one and we will see hemoglobin what and then we will we can transfuse two also so with one unit of pasteur transfusion how much is the rise in point 8 g to one g point 8 to one we might need two pasteur yes, transfusion so the idea is to make the uh, hemoglobin at the time of delivery in, in this case around target around 8 8 Suppose this is a patient of previous to cesarean section, then what should be the target? Ma'am, then we'll target for at least a ten ten gram per cent. At least ten gram above ten. Okay, at least ten ten to eleven. I would say okay. at least ten to one inch here because the patient is going to be operated, right? Yes, ma'am. Elective cesarean section is to be planned. So for a primary gravida, that the target. You can have is eight gram per cent while uh, she goes into labor. Okay. What other thing would you like to ask the patient? Only blood transfusion. No, ma'am. Uh, we will also deworm the patient, ma'am. We'll uh, like to deworm the patient, as in our country, uh, the uh, warm and uh, the round way infections are very common. Uh, Then, ma'am, we'll uh, first of all see the vitals of the patient, oxygen saturation, and provide her oxygen by face mask. If uh, the saturation is not normal, we'll like to auscultate the chest for any uh, uh, for any crepitations or any symptoms suggesting of pulmonary edema. This is your uh, basically. I'm asking that apart from blood transfusion, patient you have admitted in ward, no? So yes, how yes. do you monitor this patient? What what other advice do you give the patient, you know, while she's in ward? Is a stable patient? Is she on oxygen? She is not on oxygen. She is maintaining a saturation, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. So, what else is to be advised? Ma'am, we will uh, advise her other in in investigation for uh, for anemia also and and like is uh, iron studies and B twelve folate as and we will also anti natal routine anti natal investigation as the patient was not there. Will advise the routine investigation like okay. Viral uh, Vinita, once you have already diagnosed iron deficiency, uh, so uh, do you think it is necessary to go for B twelve and folic acid levels? Yes or no, ma'am? Yes, it ma is necessary ma because yes ma'am, no? yes, ma'am, yes. because uh, it could be ma'am dimorphic anemia. Yes, it is a very. Uh, I mean, it's really common. It's not just iron deficiency. So many times, it is dimorphic anemia. So basically, by giving blood, you can just tide over that period. But you need to know the cause also. If it is iron deficiency, you will replenish her iron stores. But in case it is B twelve folic acid deficiency, folic acid is very common. Okay. Yes. So unless until you treat her, you uh, you replenish folic acid levels. Your iron deficiency is uh, your uh, hemoglobin is not going to rise appropriately yes. even after treating her with iron. So it is very common to have dimorphic anemia. So uh, in these type of cases with severe anemia, you should always go for B twelve folic acid levels also. Okay. Okay. Now you can carry on with whatever you want to say. Uh, more investigations. Ma'am, and we will uh, routine antenatal investigation, blood group, HIV, hepatitis, uh, VDRL, and we will also advise her tipsy and and urine routine microscopy and culture sensitivity. We will advise, and we will also advise chest X-ray. Why chest X-ray want to advise in such a patient? Ma'am, because she is symptomatic, and uh, we are suspecting severe seizure of severe anemia. What she symptomatic for? Breathlessness. Breathlessness. But you've already ruled out that the chest is clear, and um, there are no other findings, no added sounds. Why do you want to go for chest X-ray? Um, the patient, ma'am, we will advise. It's congestive cardiac failure may be there in some patient there, but we can uh, do it clinically. We can. Diagnose it, ma'am. The patient stable. Yes, ma'am. 
test is clear, CBS, you are finding only ejection systolic murmur, rest the findings are not there, then why do you want to go for x-ray? Ma'am, plus VK is normal. Hmm? Uh, Ma'am, we uh, to all tuberculosis can be there, uh, they could be tuberculosis profile. Patient is not symptomatic. What old tuberculosis will it lead to? Do you treat old tuberculosis? Okay. Ma'am, we might skip just x -ray. Yeah, your respiratory rate is 18. I mean, the patient is totally asymptomatic, we say. Yes. Ex apart from just the complaints of the patient, your examination says respiratory rate of 18. Chest is clear. There is no finding that will suggest you to yes. go on for chest x-ray. Not a routine. Yes. Of course, if you are suspecting some type of chest infection, then you go or respiratory rate is high. You are suspecting pulmonary diva, you can go for chest x-ray. But for this case, it doesn't seem right to go for chest x-ray. And there's no history, past history, family history. You have already ruled out uh, tuberculosis. Okay. What else? Uh, so you have given one unit of uh, packed cells for, to this patient, no? Do you give blood, whole blood or packed cells? Packed cells. Okay. And the, the next day you get the report of eight, right? After yes. 48 hours. So how will you manage now? Ma'am, uh, we will uh, then we will uh, leave the patient for a spontaneous progress of level. We will monitor her fetal heart rate uh, and uh, her, get her ultrasonography done for the patient to look for fetal weight and other parameters of fetus. And we will try for a spontaneous progress of level. And we, will, all, we will keep uh, blood for delivery. We will try to keep one, one more blood. One more unit of blood. If you have to decide first whether she is fit for a vaginal delivery. Okay, yes. you're planning what? So, yes. and then if she is planned for a vaginal delivery, you'll keep her for spontaneous. Yes, okay. You said you want to go. Uh, yes, doctor. Sorry. Uh, yes, go on, please. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Vanita that she said she wants to get an uh, OBS ultrasound done for this patient. So, do you think there is any relevance of getting a biometry done for her? She's severe yes, anemia. Yes, ma'am. Because in case of severe anemia, there is a, a fetal growth restriction, IUG. There may be fetal growth restriction. Yes, so biometry has may. to be done. What else? What other things will you do? So estimated see? fetal weight, ma'am. And we will also go for Doppler study. We will pray. Doppler? Why? Doppler? Always? Not Why always, ma'am. But if there is a fetal growth restriction, we will go for Doppler. And if there is oligo, also oligo then also. So look for like look for like look for biometry anything else look for other parameters they... as you do for other patients it's not that she is severe anemia so you will not look for other parameters yes ma'am we will look for live presentation all we will see live presentation you can confirm from your clinical findings as well but yes, of course, what you see it at observed result, you have to go for those things. Amount and of these, like the placenta localization. And severe anemia cases require a lot of good fetal monitoring also. So you have to side by side keep doing that fetal profile. monitoring. Yes. Manning. You want to do biophysical profile, Vinita? Anything else? Non stress. Non stress test. Mm -hmm. In what is modified by a physical profile? Ma'am, in this, uh, this case, we will take two parameters only. That is a uh, deepest particle pocket and NST we will take. If the, the yeah. two are reactive, the, the two, two points are given. So that can be done. NST and AFI is good enough. You don't need to do yeah. a biophysical profile for this patient. She is not, she's not having any complaint of decreased fetal movement also that you sit for 20 minutes seeing all the parameters for 20 minutes. Okay, so after receiving one PCV, her hemoglobin, Dr. Poonam said, is 8 grams now. So what do you plan? She's not in labor still. So she's just 36 weeks. So what is your next plan? Should we discharge her patient, at 8 grams? If the patient uh, symptoms have improved and uh, her, she is, her uh, ultrasonography is in, within normal li limit, then we can... Yeah, everything is normal uh, regarding obstetrics. There is no fetal indication of keeping her in the ward. But now she is still admitted with you, and uh, with the after receiving one PCV, her hemoglobin has come out to be eight grams. 
what text i discharge her ma'am we will plan for uh, parental iron therapy yes she is already with you why not oral iron we can give oral iron also yes ma'am ma'am we can continue for oral iron if the patient is compliant enough and if uh, she has no uh, it all history of intolerance to oral iron we can continue oral iron she is already admitted with you she has already uh, gone through that 9 months period with no iron irregular iron folic acid tablets do you think she even if she is tolerating she will be compliant enough to go home and then take your iron ma'am no we will what is the best thing to do ma'am we will prefer parental iron because there is certainty of the process yes so what are the advantages of giving parental iron at this time ma'am there is a certainty for that that iron is being given and we can also uh, uh, that there is time to see the change in hemoglobin till we 36 to 39 3 weeks there is time that we can change, see for change in hemoglobin and so uh, what is the reason you are not giving her second pcv you planned one pcv and then you are planning iv iron parental iron because you think there is enough of time 3 to 4 weeks are left that iron iv iron can just replenish the stores so that is one reason uh, and before discharging the patient you want to give her one stat so uh, uh, what iron uh, what uh, parental iron would you like to give her ma'am in yes. yeah. ma'am we like to give a, a ferric carboxy maltose uh, because ma'am it is administered in single dose of 1000 microgram over 15 in to 20 minutes because uh, iron sucrose uh, first of all ma'am we will calculate the requirement of her parental iron because ma'am iron sucrose required multiple settings like at a sitting we can only give 200 mg so okay so you want to go for uh, pericarboxy maltose okay that is fine uh, so are there any adverse reactions associated with this parental iron ma'am yes there can be anaphylactic reactions Uh, which for which we have to monitor we have to give uh, these parental iron slowly over 15 to 20 minutes and we have to keep uh, the material ready for if any anaphylactic reactions happens like hydrocortisone in injection evil uh how will you monitor so, that yeah how will you start that iron ma'am uh, for that uh, first of all we will uh, we will take 100 ml uh, in normal saline and we will take 200 ml uh, to if if we are giving ferric carbox fcm we are giving then we will take 1000 mg and uh, for for that in initial 5 minutes we will uh, give that at 20 to 30 drops per minute and we will look for any reaction like fever chills or breathlessness and if patient is tolerating that uh, parental iron in 5 minutes then we will increase her rate to 80 to 19 drops per minute and we will transfuse this within 20 to 30 minutes this whole preparation okay so you should be and ready be, with yeah. yes ma'am in so between any kind of reaction rate. any kind of reaction what you should have with you ma'am we we should have avil phenidamine and we should have uh, hydrocort and we should also have adrenaline adrenaline yeah. so injection. emergency trolley should be ready with you should be ready with any kind to deal with any kind of reactions yes. okay now uh, the patient has gone into labor okay. yes yes and now how will you monitor this patient ma'am we will keep keep her in propped up position and we will give her intermittent oxygen and we will uh, keep iv flu uh, iv line patient but will restrict iv fluid but we will keep her hydration adequate and uh, we will also monitor her fetal heart sound we will fetal heart rate we will monitor chest and chest. we will do frequent chest auscultation for basal crepes if they are found we will monitor for that mm -hmm. and uh, we, will, we will also uh, give her nlg6 if required and sedatives might be given but we can and if she is in active labor we, we can cut short the second stage of labor by forceps or ventus and uh, we then we will also uh, in that that time also we will also monitor for the chest auscultation and uh, i will if there is any sign of decompensation or then we can also give her injection lasix and uh, we will also uh, if delivery occurs after that we will actively manage the third stage of labor what is active and, management of third stage of labor 
ma'am there is uh, five components there is you uterine we will do uterine massage and uh, we will uh, give injection oxytocin i am 10 10 international unit i am is given after delivery of head and uh, there is control cord tax uh, traction what do you do at your place this is what you are doing what do you do ma'am we will uh, do you control cord traction we do and we will give, give 10 unit, international unit oxytocin im after delivery of head Okay. And plus, uh, ma'am, intravenously in five hundred ml of saline, we also give twenty units slowly, sintocinon and in control. For in, in every patient, you are doing twenty units. In every yes. patient, you are transferring twenty units. Yeah, but what is the purpose of giving twenty units sintocinon, Ashima? Ma'am, uh, in patient, uh, ma'am, in these patients, we are anticipating postpartum hemorrhage and. Uh, so she is the case of severe anemia. We already told that we should be restricting IV fluids. So is this twenty uh, units intervention on the only method we can manage PPH in this? And we are not talking about PPH. We are talking about active management of first stage of labor. Yes. So active management has three components. What is the third component? I'm asking. I've given few words. Concentrated. Oxytocin, you this already gave. Oxytocin, you have given. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And a control control cord traction we have done. Okay. And and delayed cord clamping. Well, yes, very important such a case because yes. when you do a delayed cord clamping, more around eighty ml of the blood is transferred to the fetus. You know, if it is yes, you are cutting the cord at within seconds and you are cutting at one minute. You are basically helping the baby to receive at least eighty ml of blood. In such yes. a case of anemia, the baby iron stores are already less. Okay, so it's very important for such a patient, for such a baby. So delayed cord clamping and uterine massage is to be done or is not to be done? No, ma'am. No, it has been removed from that. Yes, it is not to be done. It is only done in such a case when you are not giving sintocinon, tofilaxis, oxytocin, ten units IU, I, IV, or IM, right? Tell me the other alternative to oxytocin. You said you cannot give methargin. Why you cannot give methargin in such a case, ma'am? Because these patients can go in heart failure, so methargin is contraindicated. Why? Why? How does a patient go into heart failure by methargin injection when he, they are not going with the oxytocin or any other drug, ma'am? Methargin will lead to increase in blood pressure, ma'am. And okay, and then what is the mechanism of action of methargin? How is it different from oxytocin? Ma'am, it it is ergot derivative, ma'am. Okay, and it is. What is the difference in the action? Ma'am, it it uh, act on sympathetic nervous system, ma'am. Where does it act? Ma'am, uh, it causes the contraction of the peripheral vessels. Uh, Where it is acting on the uterus? Which segment? Ma'am, lower uterus. Oxytocin act on ma'am upper uterine segment. Are there any methargin receptors on the uterus? Are there any oxytocin receptors on the uterus? Yes, ma'am. Oxytocin receptors are there. Where are they? They are on uh, upper uterine segment, ma'am. Fundus. Yes, ma'am. So oxytocin is acting there. It is contracting the whole of the uterus. What yes, about methargin? Where does it act? What is it causing? Ma'am. It will act on blood vessels of the uterus, uterine sinuses. How is it different from oxytocin? That is what we are asking. Ma'am, oxytocin is short acting mainly. Okay, or. 
Ethergen causes a sustained and tetany contractions. Okay. That is where there is sudden ejection of the blood into the systemic circulation. Right? Okay. And this is the difference between oxytocin and ethergen. That is why in low doses, oxytocin rela relaxes also. That is why you are taking this, this property for induction of labor. And if you increase the dose of oxytocin to 20 units, it causes again a tetany contraction, which helps in prevention of or treatment of EPH. Right? This is how is it different. So, methargin is to be avoided. Any other drug you can give apart from methargin and oxytocin if you do not have any refrigerator available with you. Ma'am, we can. My, my also my... used in active management of third stage of labor nowadays. Mysoprostol, ma'am. Tablet mysoprostol. Okay, mysoprostol is one. Good. Any other thing? Ma'am, carboprost can be injection. Carboprost can be used. It is not to be used in active management first stage of labor. Tranexamic acid we also Tranexamic acid we are using in management of PPH. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Or kya kar sakte hai use? Any other thing? Have you heard carbitosin? Yes, ma'am. What is that? How is it different from oxytocin? It, it is better in such case, in such anemic cases, no? How is it? How does it act? It is heat stable. Okay, it doesn't require any refrigeration for the storage. That's an advantage with carbidosin. Any other thing? It is, ma'am, longer acting than. Yes, it is longer acting. Definitely. The half life is around 40 minutes. What is the half life of oxytocin? 8 to 10 minutes. 2 to 3 minutes. That is why you have to give an infusion. You, know? you want a sustained kind of contraction. That is why you are giving infusions. So this is the difference, okay. So for active animal with thirst to labor, you can also use carbitocin, okay? Yes. That produces a long duration of action. And you don't have to give an infusion also because it will avoid overload also. Load overload. Okay, what else? Uh, the patient has, the baby has delivered. No? Then what else you can do in such a case to avoid any kind of blood loss? Remember, we, uh, we can... Do uterine massage there here in this case? Why do you want to do a uterine massage? If it is flabby, you do a uterine massage. Yes. So you have to check for uterine flabbiness. Sir, yes, we will also look for cervical any tear, cervical tear. Yes, also, if very important. In such a case, if you have given, given episiotomy, it has to be stayed then and there. Don't yes. waste time. Don't waste time basically because it will the patient will be losing blood. In any case, you have to preserve. As much as um, uh, the blood you can preserve, you know, because any amount of blood loss will be very harmful for this patient, right? Okay, what just else? one question. Uh, uh, you have told in your initial slides regarding hemodilution and pregnancy. Okay, so is it uh, is this physiological change helping somewhere now after delivery? In case yes, patient is happening? Yes, ma'am. There is contraction of blood volume after delivery, and also diluted blood is being lost. That is one point. So it is a way of actually saving uh, dead blood cells. So this physiological dilution and anemia is actually helping the patient. Okay. So how do you monitor this patient now in the postnatal? Ma'am, we will uh, monitor her BP, pulse, respiratory rate, and we will see for her chest auscultation. We will do, and uh, we will. Uh, give prophylactic antibiotic also if needed and uh, we will uh, monitor her for at least six hours post delivery we will see for her vitals and we will look for bleeding if uh, bleeding pb we will frequently see for bleeding per vagina because so normal from to two, apart from the vitals which you all which you see in all the patients see the post monitoring remains the same except that you have to be more careful regarding patient going into failure Okay, so starting from top to toe, all the vitals, the uterine tone has to be seen, frequently checked, and the bleeding and episiotomy site. Patient has passed urine, 
within at least four to six hours of delivery. So these are important things. Check for any hematoma formation. She's already anemic. So we can't afford any type of blood loss from anywhere. Rest of the monitoring remains the same as for other patients. Now, when she is delivered, what about the baby? She's anemic. We don't want her to uh, feed the baby, or we allow her with the uh, normal and recommendations to feed the baby. We will allow her with normal recommendations. Will not so restrict. Unless, it. yeah, unless until it's a very uh, um, See, patient is decompensated, then we can. Yeah, otherwise. you have to. You have to follow the normal recommendations of exclusive breastfeeding starting within one hour of delivery. Okay, what about painkillers? Ma'am, we can give painkillers to the patient like group. You should group give her painkillers, yes, because you should avoid any type of pain in this patient. She can go into decompensation in case of severe pain. Uh, infection, you have already told. What about ambulation? Should we confine her to the bed and give her no, will, oxygen? We will allow her for early ambulation. So if the condition allows, she should be allowed for early ambulation. So in the postnatal period, uh, what, how will you manage? How will you basically follow this patient? She is delivered. She is now 24 hours post-delivery. Ma'am, if everything is fine, we can discharge the patient after two, three days and we will give her prophylactic iron for six months with fully <laughs> And we will, after uh, three weeks, we will, uh, three, three weeks, we will follow with it. Three to four weeks, we will follow with repeat CBC. For if do you want, do you, will, will you do hemoglobin also in the postnatal period? Yes, ma'am, we will do, post delivery, we will do one hemoglobin. Basal hemoglobin. Suppose the hemoglobin is seven now. Yes, ma'am. What will you do? Then we will we can plan for parental iron therapy uh, first. One dose FCM can ferrous carboxy maltose one gram can be given. Then patient can be discharged to come with repeat CPC after three to four four week if there is any. Now you have given one uh, shot of FCM. Now you are about to discharge this patient after four days, right? What in the discharge will you write? What specific points? Ma'am, uh, we will uh, ask her to uh, any uh, bleeding per vaginum, fall smelling discharge, or we are also for any uh, symptom like fever, cough. If these symptoms come, you have to come to hospital. And if any sign of breathlessness or breathlessness or fat, easy fatigue come, you should come. Okay, anything else? What else? What else any can you pain, ask any view? Right in the discharge? Iron rich diet, ma'am. Okay, iron Ma'am, we'll also advise contraception method to avoid pregnancy for at least next two years for the replenishment of iron stores. And uh, we can also give her a contraceptive like DMP or Chaya. If progesterone only pill we will give after three weeks. Okay. Okay. What and what is the advice? How how much time she should follow it up in the postnatal period? Um, um, uh, at least 100 days uh, minimum she should uh... for 100 days she should ma'am we will uh, uh, first we can ask for six weeks after six weeks she should follow at least four to six weeks she should follow and she can follow of us with six for six at least six months post delivery she should she should follow us she can follow us monthly for six months if the patient was anemic no for six months you have to prescribe what is what iron. Yeah. Iron. Uh, iron, tablet and yeah. yes, iron and folic acid tablet. Uh, uh, 60 milligram elemental iron, iron. We will and 500 microgram of folic acid for 180 days minimum. Six months. Six months. It has to take. Yes. And avoid. And contraception is to be given. Right? Yes. What iron rich diet will you advise her? If she asks, what can I eat? Ma'am, if 
if the patient is a non vegetarian then we can advise her meat liver fish and egg yolk etc but if she is vegetarian we will ask her for green leafy vegetables ma'am um, avoid what is the difference in the uh, vegetarian and the non vegetarian diet ma'am heme iron is better absorbed so we'll uh, prescribe uh, if she is non vegetarian non vegetarian courses and if she is vegetarian we'll uh, advise her to avoid uh, like to take uh, dates and uh, to take uh, nuts be uh, red beans and uh, legumes and uh, avoid uh, the tea and coffee within 1 hour of intake of iron folic acid tablets which is a better and form of absorption of iron heme or the non Ma'am, heme iron is better absorbed, and uh, uh, ma'am, ferrous uh, form is more absorbed, and uh, she should take with lime water. So, uh, as the vitamin C increases uh, the absorption of the iron. So, iron is absorbed basically in ferrous form. In which part of the intestine? Ma'am, duodenum or upper jejunum. Okay. Uh, do you know how how does it get absorbed, and what are the factors which affect? You said phytates and everything. Anything else? How is it get transported to from the Enterocytes into the circulation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, that this uh, we we take iron or patient take iron in a ferrous uh, ferric form, and that is converted to by ferrous ferric reductase to Fe plus two, and this is transported by di DMT one to the enterocytes, and then uh, then after that uh, by hepatin, it is again converted to Fe plus three, and after that it is uh, Uh, if the uh, uh, it is to be transported, then it will be con uh, attached to apo transferrin, apo transferrin, and then it will be delivered to a reticular endothelial system like uh, erythrocyte precursor. And if the iron uh, and uh, if the iron is uh, extra iron is there, then it will be and uh, that will be attached to apo ferritin, and it will be stored in the form of ferritin. What are the other factors when the iron has entered into the enterocytes? Then, when the iron has to be transported from the enterocyte into the circulation, what are the other factors which are acting at this time? Ma'am, hepcidin is one of the factors that is released by the liver. So, uh, basically, this hepcidin, if this is raised, then this will inhibit the absorption of iron. So, uh, uh, in cases of the uh, uh, chronic, uh, uh, in cases of uh, liver disorders, and in cases of chronic inflammatory disorders, this hepcidin is raised. So, this will inhibit the absorption of iron. Yeah, hepcidin basically negatively regulating. When the hepcidin levels are raised, the iron will get. The amount of iron will be decreased. The absorption will be decreased. Okay, so you say that if suppose the patient is intolerant to iron, you written your slide also that give her intermittent iron therapy. What is that intermittent iron therapy? You know what is the uh, cases of this intermittent iron iron therapy also? This will be effective. You got my point. Even intermittent iron therapy would be effective. Yes. Right. How does it help? Because you are giving less iron, no? When you are giving iron daily, you are giving sixty milligram daily. Now you have because the patient was intolerant to iron, you said that you take it on alternate day. Okay. So what is that? Why is it so that even the alternative day therapy is also uh, does effect? Ma'am, there is more absorption of the iron in cases the patient is iron deficient. So even uh, if the patient takes on alternate days, so the GI side effects will be less, and the absorption won't be hampered that much because uh, ultimately uh, there is uh, increased absorption. No, it is because of this hepcidin levels. Because with the sustained, uh, when the iron is there in the enterocytes in the circulation, in the basically GI daily, so that increases the hepcidin levels. When you are giving intermittent iron therapy, the hepcidin levels goes down. So iron gets better absorbed. So this is one of the theories they say that even the intermittent iron therapy will help. Okay. When when as the you know the iron stores uh, basically iron gets transferred from mother to the fetus. How does it happen? Well, it is transferred. You say that it is said that iron uh, the fetus is a parasite. Is it true? Yes. Whatever, it's true. So it doesn't depend whether the mother is uh, deficient of iron stores or mother is having less the iron. The fetus will take all of the iron. Is it like that? Yes, ma'am. What are the other factors which control basically? 
how how is it transferred in which trimester the maximum transfer of the iron takes place to the fetus? Which are the cells uh, regulating? Ma'am, uh, that physiological dilution anemia uh, decreases the viscosity of blood, and uh, again the hepcidin levels, right? In, in the second and the third trimester, the maximum transfer of the iron takes place. Okay, in uh, you know what happens in a premature baby? Premature baby will be full of iron stores or less of iron stores? Tell me. Less, less of iron because the transfer could not take place. So that is why the second and the third trimester, the acetin levels are markedly low. It helps in the transfer of the iron from the mother to the fetus through sensitive trophoblast. That's one. Okay. So you told your patient is very non-compliant, okay? And you are telling that you will just advise her oral iron and she goes home. Now she comes back to you at a uh, after two weeks for the visit. So how do you confirm the compliance, whether she has taken iron or not? How can we, we will ask if what is the her color of her stool that night. So what should be the color of stool? Then it should be a black uh, if she is taking iron. Okay, what else can we do? Ma'am, strips of the tablet, we can give her like 10 or 20 tablets at a time and then recheck when she comes. Yeah, you can give her not exactly like ATT direct observation, but yes, you can keep a counter check that whatever she, you ask her to bring back that copy pack of iron and just check the blister pack, how many tablets are empty. So that is one of the way to keep a check. And of course, asking about the change of color in the stools. So that is important. And regarding the diet, you told so many things, green leafy vegetables and so many things. But uh, looking at the Indian scenario, the women come from such a poor social background. What common things can you advise them? Ma'am, good. Uh, Ma'am, good. She can take. She, it's a very uh, rich source of iron, and uh, Ma'am, we will also uh, ask to take that uh, food with uh, lemon, lemon juice or orange juice. We can say, and we will ask her to uh, take calcium at different time. At least keep yes. one hour gap in iron okay, and calcium first. See, when we are talking about iron deficiency anemia, the whole time we kept on talking, we will advise iron, iron tablets, we will uh, advise her iron rich food. Iron. So iron is okay. But is this iron sufficient for heme, hemoglobin? Hemoglobin forms protein from dish protein. protein. Yes, so you have to advise that also. So protein also forms a part of advice. Yes. Iron, mm -hmm. iron rich diet forms a part of advice. And then the facilitators of iron absorption. What you're talking about vitamin c folic acid so these are going to make that but that uh, ultimate hemoglobin so the whole of the advice is very important ambulation and one thing you missed while you were talking uh, you were replying for dr Poolam's uh, question regarding the pnc uh, advice so you were telling about you will tell her that if she feels uh, dizziness if she feels pain and whatever i mean so many things you have uh, targeted but what about pain in calf muscles pain in abdomen you not advise her that. Yes. yes, that is very important for these patients. So you have to ask them to take plenty of fluids, ambulation. You have to tell them regarding the sign symptoms for venous thrombolism. Yes, calf muscle. If there is any tenderness in the calf muscles, if there is pain in abdomen, pain in abdomen is one of the symptoms for any abdominal sepsis that is common in anemia patient. I just so, wanted I to ask one question. Uh, you have given uh, FCM in postnatal period. Will you still give iron for 180 days? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. We will not, not give one. It is 1000 milligram. We will already after the parental therapy, we will restrict the iron, uh, the oral iron for at least two weeks of the one to two weeks of period. No, for 180 days, you said no, you need to give for postnatal period 180 days. So, if you have filled up the store, should we give it or not? That's what my question is. Yes, very good question. Not, not give me. So, we are giving uh, this FCM to those women who are who we think that they are going to be non compliant for oral iron, especially after delivery. So, that part is taken care of, you know, at least. Yes. That's because parental iron is uh, taking care of replenishing the stores also. No? 
what do you do? Need to give RN after that. Um, the more, I um, mean, now the time is out there, but uh, still you should uh, also uh, know in anemia case, somebody, somebody may ask you is about the national programs related to anemia prevention. So that also you should be reading in uh, this particular topic. Very excellent presentation by both of you, Vinita and Arsuna. And uh, Shivani, yes, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, it was a really a nice, informative class. Uh, it was covering all the basics, and uh, I would like to thank, on behalf of uh, AOGD Delhi PG Forum, I would like to thank Dr. Rina uh, for uh, giving her valuable time. The moderation was really excellent. I think the moderators were more prepared rather than the B <laughs> rather than the PGs. So uh, it was really good. And uh, yes, Dr. Ashima and Dr. Vinita have really toiled hard to uh, bring this presentation up to the mark. So, uh, and then last of all, I would like to thank Dr. Deepika from uh, Jackson Pal for this uh, excellent platform that she has given. And uh, our next, next class is on uh, 17th October, that is post-menopausal uh, meetings. So that's, that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I take this opportunity and thank all the AOGD office bearers for taking Jackson Paul as the uh, academic partner for your PG forum. Uh, we present to you JP Tone Iron Syrup, which is uh, good for uh, the topic that we were discussing today. Two teaspoons uh, twice daily helps her meet the iron needs. Let her life fill with colors of joy. JP Tone Iron Syrup with zinc and vitamins. We also have Divatron newly launched micronized Dihydrogestron tablets of 10 mg fully indigenized, micronized didrogestron as Divatron. Then the age-old maintain injections 50 mg hydroxyprogesterone caproid, the only US FD approved progestin for free term delivery. And of course, our Lycoret, the cell protector, the ultimate cell protector for whenever their oxidative stress uh, threatens, please offer protection to both mother and baby through Lycoret soft gels. We also have a combination of lycopene in uh, lycored preg sachet, which is L-arginine, DHA, and lycopene for high-risk pregnancies. So we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, please do join us.